As you just saw from the introduction, uh, the gun looks a little different. I uh, changed the aluminum bottle. Uh, that was, I believe this is aluminum. Yeah, aluminum bottle on here to a Talon Tunes uh, 480cc bottle with a 250, I believe it's 250 bar uh, maximum pressure, 36, uh, a little more than 3600 PSI, uh, where the aluminum one, for, the original from Crawl, uh, is a 425, yeah, and only uh, 200 bar or 2900 PSI. Uh, so the gun looks really, really nice. The next five minutes of video is going to show you how to swap the bottle out. There is one caveat uh, up here at the front of the stock where the neck uh, goes into, the bottle goes into the stock here. Uh, there has to be a little modification. You do have to do a little bit of filing or dremeling out, you know, sanding out just a little. It's not a big deal. Ten minutes. I'll show you how that's done in the next five, it's five minutes of video. And then after that five minutes of video showing you how to swap the bottle out, uh, I'll do a quick shot string um, and then just a quick summary. So I've got one more modification on the Crawl Puncher Jumbo. And um, I think it's a really good one. I hope you do too. Uh, this is the original bottle that uh, came with the Crawl. This is a 425 cc. It uh, goes to 200 bar, so 2,900 PSI. And what I have here is a Talon Tune carbon fiber bottle. This one is 480 cc's and goes to 3626 PSI, which I believe is 250 bar. Uh, now this is an unregulated gun, so taking the pressure that far probably... I, I don't know, I don't think it's going to help because you have to adjust the hammer spring and the valve spring in order when you go up that high and it might increase the uh, extreme spread. But what I plan to do is like I've done with the original Kral uh, bottle is to push it to about 30, maybe 31, 3200. And this bottle is meant to do that, but this wasn't really meant. I mean, it can do it, uh, but it's really meant to only be filled to 200 bar. This one I'm gonna be probably taking to about 210 bar. Um, so anyway, I have already taken the metal bottle off and I have the Talon Tunes bottle on. What I had to do to remove this metal bottle from the block, um, the drop block here, I keep calling this the drop block, that's because it kind of drops down, um, was to put this in a vise gently with some cloth. Don't, you know, you don't want to damage and you don't want to crush its aluminum. Uh, it, it's pretty strong, uh, but you don't want to mar it up or any, even though it sits inside the wood, uh, just use a cloth and with a strap wrench, uh, you know, it's a nylon strap wrench, uh, you will undo this bottle, okay, and, uh, sorry, this bottle, and then you'll just simply screw this on and hand tighten it down, and you should be okay. Um, looks great. I really, really love the bottle. It's lighter, so what are the benefits to doing this? So, larger air capacity, higher uh, PSI, and it's lighter. And it just looks really nice. Um, so it's going to help the gun. It's a few ounces. The weight difference. Uh, so this one is, the original was 0.56 kilograms. Uh, and the, let's see, what is this? This is 0.45. So uh, it's about 11 kilograms. What is that? 2.2, .2, uh, I don't know, exactly. a few ounces. It's a few ounces lighter. It's not a big significant difference. Um, but really, again, it's for the larger volume, slightly lighter, and higher pressure. But I like that I'll probably get, I don't know, six, seven, eight more shots um, on the gun. Well, anyway, so if you're planning on purchasing a Talon Tunes bottle uh, to replace the, uh, I guess, steel or aluminum, I think it's aluminum, aluminum bottle uh, that's on the crawl, original crawl, there's one thing to really be careful about. This is not a unscrew and drop it in and you're done. You do have to do some modification to the stock, the inside. It's not a big deal. It took me 10 minutes using uh, a Dremel or a rotary tool uh, with a sanding uh, bit on the end. Just remove, your, so let me explain. So the neck of, here we go, the neck of these two bottles are different. And because the neck sits inside of the stock, the thicker neck of the Talon Tunes bottle will not allow 
the drop block to slide in. So, looking in this camera here, hopefully you can see this, what I did was, I dremeled out a part here, even on the bottom, the entire, the entire, entire circumference of the neck of the bottle in this area. Let's see, hopefully you're seeing that. So it's not a big deal. It, I took maybe, it looks like about a sixteenth of an inch all around. Again, took ten minutes and a little try, you know, not a big deal. And I'll fix that up with some true oil and it'll look, you won't even know the difference. Um, drops in nicely. Uh, but this gun also uh, came back, uh, well, the valve, as you saw from an earlier, if you did see from an earlier video, my valve stem broke and I sent the valve and the stem off to Troy, uh, Troy Hammer at Annihilator Air Guns, and he repaired it, he uh, drilled out the channel, um, and so when it came back to me about a week ago, I just screw it in, I screwed it into the, the drop lock uh, with the aluminum bottle, didn't matter, at that point I didn't have the, uh, the new bottle, and I started testing the gun, and it was shooting around a 34 grain around 880 feet per second. Wow, okay. Uh, it's great. Then I put the aluminum bottle on, and it seemed to have reduced a little bit of the extreme spread and also increased a little bit of power. Now, uh, you're going to see, I have, it, I have a shot up there of 875 uh, I'll, I'll put it up, I don't know, put it somewhere in, in this area. And uh, you can see that was the last shot I took just a few minutes ago. Um, I'm going to do a, a short 10 string of the 34, 34.95 uh, JSB King Heavy, uh, just to show that uh, what it's shooting since it came back from Troy, the valve came back from Troy. Now, just so you know, I did the initial tune on this, got it up to 50, 51 foot pounds of energy. Um, I wish I'd sent it off to Troy, but uh, at the time I was impatient and I just said, let me go at it. It was okay. Uh, gave that valve to Troy he, to repair. He repairs it, puts a new hardened stem in it, opens up the channel. I simply screw it in and, hey, the gun's shooting 60 foot-pounds of energy. I did get shots of 890 feet per second, which is uh, pretty amazing, I think, um, out of a gun that was only shooting uh, uh, 725 with a 34 grain. So it, it's gone up quite a bit. Uh, so you're seeing the gun without the shroud. Uh, this particular gun uh, had a cracked shroud that I didn't notice when I purchased it originally. Um, here, let me show you. Let me just bring that a little close. I don't know if you see that right there, but that right at the threads, right here, uh, the shroud cracked. And uh, I guess over time, because the shroud is screwed into uh, a piece like this, the shroud holds on to the end of the block here, and then this part does not hold on to the barrel at any point in time. It's screwed into this particular uh, piece and so what happens is the constant thumping and I have a, a, a moderator at the end of the gun uh, The moderator is attached to this piece the, the constant air pressure kind of acts like a hammer and it kind of opened this up quite a bit So it, it revealed itself to me recently uh, And pyramid air is aware of the issue with the crawl puncher jumbo uh, I'm gonna call it aesthetic uh, shroud because it really doesn't function to silence the gun at all um, a lot of them apparently have been broken or cut at the thread because it's so thin. When they made the threads, they cut right through the metal um, and it created this little, and a lot of them are broken. So I understand that at Pyramid Air they have a list of individuals that are due to get new shrouds. I'm one of them. Uh, so for now I have the gun without the shroud. But what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to shoot a few over the crani to let you see what it is doing right now. Um, I'm just going to do 10 shots straight because I was already amazed. It's, it's been pretty consistent. Um, the spreads are somewhere around 20, 25. Uh, the bigger bottle seems to have reduced the spread, 
Uh, I'm not going to say it increased the power. It didn't. That was the, the valve tuning uh, from Troy. And uh, let me just, let's do a 10 shot string. 891 890. Oh, that's, I'm going to call that 900. 902. Wow. 893. 892. 888. 894. Wow. So, as you can see, this this gun is a beast right now. Wow. Let, you know what? Let me put a let me put a 25 in there, just for comparison. Let's just see where we are with a 25. Sorry. Just gonna put put two in really quick. I don't. I'm not even gonna edit that part of the video. It's just a pain in the ass to edit. 997. 999. Okay, so it's shooting about almost a thousand feet per second with the uh, 25s, which is just way too much power. Um, you know, I can, again, I can tune it down. I have an adjuster. I just, I haven't moved the adjuster um, for no reason other than I like shooting the 34 grains as powerful as I can. Uh, and, and around I think the sweet spot is around 880 to 900, somewhere in that range for the 34 grain. I was reading uh, a bunch of uh, threads from GTA over this summer, 2017 summer, and a bunch of individuals were talking about the BC of the 34 grain, uh, which is some people were saying it's like 0.5, others uh, were saying it's around 0.4. You know what? Depending on the distance, uh, you know, obviously the, I think the further you stretch it out, uh, the BC is going to change, you know, because you've you, you got a crony right in front of you and then you have another crown of either 25, 50, 75 or 100 yards and depending how far out you are uh, plus there's other atmospheric barometer and uh, altitude all that plays a role in, in ballistic coefficient bottom line is I try to use the most conservative number for BC I was using 0.36 uh, which I think is a little too low I think most people would argue that 0.36 is too low for the uh, JSB King heavies I I'll stay around 0.4. I think that's a safe BC. And what that means is, obviously, the higher the BC, the straighter the trajectory, or the more power or velocity it, it retains further out. And I, I think I saw that in some of my other videos shooting far out, um, that the 34 grains are quite a good pellet. Um, not as good as the Nielsen specialty ammo. You know, bullets are always going to be better. But the bottom line is, and the reason I'm talking to you about this is, you know, I did quite a bit to get this gun up to some power. And uh, this is awesome. I mean, it's, I, I don't know. I don't know what to say except that it's a great gun and it shoots those, I think the 34 grain JSB heavies are a very, very good pellet. Um, probably as good as you can get right now. And this gun loves them and it's shooting it and it looks sexy and I hope you like this video.